It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning, it's Christy. Good morning. Hey, Christy, get it off your chest, mama. I mean, these men need to go to the doctor because we're losing <laughs> too many African American men. That's okay. true. You're right. When you said it and like that, I thought you got burnt or something. Yeah, I didn't know what you were talking <laughs> about. I didn't know No, no. Get burnt at this age? No. How um, old are you? 54. You can still get burnt, especially if you date out here with these little young boys. Young boys? I don't want no young boys. That's right. The only thing you got to worry about at this age is worms. <laughs> I don't have worms, Charlemagne. I ain't say you. I'm just saying the men you might mess with. But no, I agree but with you. You know what? This and is this is this is um um woman's mom. And they need to take their man to the doctor. You right. I agree with you. All the men definitely need because to go to the doctor to get a checkup. You right. They don't want to get colonoscopies. They don't want to go to the doctor. They don't want to go to cardiologists. And they dying too young. That's why I can't find a husband. Let me tell you something. I've been in, I've been going to the cardiologist for the past three months since December. I don't wore a heart monitor. I didn't had it to where they put the ink inside you to make right. sure. Because I just wanted to make sure. I did man. that last week. They did the they did the sonogram. They did the ink. They did the stress test. I did the stress Everything. test. Yep. Yeah, I did the stress. I, I didn't do the ink. I did the stress test. Like, I did the colonoscopy. These women need to take the man to the doctor because the men don't want to go to the doctor. That's why I'm so single. That ain't why you single, mama. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, no, listen. It's hard to find a man that's my caliber of man that I'm looking for. Don't what do you, you do? Where are you don't from? Don't sell yourself short, ma. You're 54. This is the MPA bus operator. That's right. Oh, you the bus operator from the Bronx. That's right. Don't sell yourself short. You're only 54. You're going to find love by 60. No, it's, it's not finding love. It's just right by 60. What I'm saying is, <laughs> is I don't want nobody sick. I got you. You might want to talk want to some of the people you pick up. Best, but when you get sick, I can take care of you. But I don't want to get you sick already. Why don't you holler at some of the people you pick up on the bus? Excuse me? You, what? You pick up some of the passengers on the bus. When you pick them up, you might see a cute, a cutie. You holler at them. Let me explain something to you. At least you know where I work. I don't know where you work. I get what you're saying. All right. That's real. I mean, come on. I write you bougie <laughs> bus driver. <laughs> bougie bus driver. Out here no, missing I'm, your blessing. I'm not bougie, but if I have a lot going on, you have to come close. Yeah, but don't forget Warren Buffett goes to McDonald's every day. Excuse me? <laughs> you don't know Warren Buffett. You know who Warren Buffett is, mama? I didn't say anything about a guy that worked at McDonald's. I'm just saying I'm, I'm, listen, my caliber. Here's, you don't have to here, here's the moral McDonald's, of the story, man. Ma'am. Some of those managers at McDonald's make some good money. That's you right. Go. That Your blessing exactly. might be at McDonald's. That's all Jason Lee trying right. to say. <laughs> okay. The moral of the story Jason, is I agree with you. You stop gossiping and find me a husband. <laughs> now you work for her. You sit around, okay, Jason. Okay, I'm going to post that today. I got you. Jason, Jason too busy sleeping with your future husband. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably not so. A, not this is what I'm saying. This is why I can't find a husband. <laughs> Jason's sleeping with them. But listen, this is why they you... They don't go to the this, doctor. No, no, no. no they don't no. have a job. No, they don't have a career, no pension coming. I'm getting ready to retire. Sounds like you just need to be a lesbian. No. What? Yeah, you, there's nothing out here for you, clearly. You just you Wait, got a you whole can't list. find a man, be a lesbian. What what <laughs> advice, Charlemagne? Well, well mama, I don't want to be a lesbian, somebody. Charlemagne. You find somebody. You got good benefits, you're about to retire. You you find somebody. Good luck. It's not finding somebody. I mean, oh, you Lord, you're making me tired. I'm going to pray for you, baby. All right, you have a good one. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, <laughs> you mean? I'm going to pray for you. Have a good one, Mama. Have a great day, all right? All right Don't let the people stress you time. out. Love you, Love you too. You back. How you get mad when somebody say they're going to pray for you? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I try to use an analogy about never know when your love going to get. She's talking about, I don't want to go to McDonald's. That's right. Don't go to McDonald's then. <laughs> Hello, who's this? What's up, Envy? What's up, Trav? What's up, sis? What's up, Sean? Trav, what up, sis? Oh, What's God. the word? Oh, oh, Jason. Jason. <laughs> Here we go. I was Don't playing, do it. I, hey, as soon as I posted you, the flyer, as soon as I posted the flyer yesterday, I said I know his gay ass is calling up. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. I, girl, don't start. I miss you too, Jason. How you been? I'm good. That's good. That's good. I'm calling to talk about. So look, they got this DS Philly list going around. In Philly, where they put all these boys on there, and it's causing like this uproar. All these girls just begging to see the list and calling all these men gay. What and is I have it? a problem with that. What is it? 
It's a DL list. A DL Philly list. DL Send me the link. Send me the link. <laughs> <laughs> Jason wants to confirm. Look, I ain't gonna lie. He wants to confirm some I of the followed, names. I follow two of them on the list. I follow two of them on the list. But my problem with it is they don't even know these men are really gay. It could be some heart broke gay boy who just had a crush on some straight men and has made his list up and is out here calling men gay. Is Charlemagne on the list? I'm not from Philly. And I wouldn't be but down. You are, that's, you, you are on the list, though, Sean, because you were <laughs> I wouldn't be on the download though. What's the point of being on the download? The point because is- because people don't like to come out because people treat people differently. People lose friends. People lose family. Like when I came out when I was twenty one, I lost a lot of straight friends. You not me though. I'd be popping if I was out. Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, come on now. Tell him something. Oh, I'm in these streets. <laughs> but I'm also Jason, right there. that he would be a ran through bottom. A ran through bottom. I would not be ran through bottom. I'd be top tier trade out here, okay? No, you would not top tier trade. Who's teaching you this lingo? <laughs> Get out my community. <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, it is up now. Jason Lee is here. Our co-host is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, I want to say one thing. What? You want to say why one you thing? Didn't give, um, why you didn't give the girl who give, um, who hit the guy with the bowling ball come don't give the day? You, that's a good question. I haven't seen the video. I heard about it, though. Yo, that was some bull****. But you gave Dana Howard, um, what is the white guy name? Dana, Dana, Dana White. Dana, Dana Howard sang a song called Freak Like Me back in the day. Love with Dana Howard. Yeah, I know. I love that song, too. But why you give that b- uh, um, Jesus. donkey of the day? I don't even know her name. I'm going to look it up. I think, she, I think she might be deserving of a donkey today. I think you're right, sir. She got to get two donkeys of the day. Okay, why are you drinking that this time of morning, bro? Yeah. You just leaving the club? Hey, why are you ain't drinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know somebody drunk. Why you ain't drinking? Why you ain't drinking? Why, why you drunk? Why you ain't drinking? Those Jesus. are hours when he leaving the club, though. Definitely Hello? leaving. Hello, who's this? This is Jordan the Wilder. Good morning, breakfast club. Jordan! Good morning, Good morning, Jordan. Get it off your chest. I just wanted to wish a safe and happy and healthy pregnancy to all the pregnant women out there, including myself. Congratulations. Congrats. You got a little well done the way. Thank you. Yeah. Can you guys look at my Instagram page, please? What's your Instagram page? What's your IG? Jordan the Welder. Yeah, Charlemagne follows me. Yeah, I didn't know you were pregnant. I didn't realize you were pregnant, though. Well, congrats. You, I see no pregnancy photos of that. Yeah. Oh, how many months? Oh, watch my story, too. I am six months. Oh, well, man, congrats. Me... Enjoy it. Yeah, let Enjoy me know where it. your registry at, Jordan. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning. How you doing? Chef. What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. Oh, uh, first thing I want to just say, um, I called last year around, actually, one year ago to this day. Yeah, last year I called, and I told you guys I forgot my mother's birthday. I just want to wish her a happy birthday again. It was yesterday. I didn't forget this time. I just want to wish her a happy birthday. Um... Uh, and I want to ask y'all something about this economy, man. Like, what do you think? Of, what you think is gonna go on with this economy for the next year? I'm in the truck, and I'm a truck driver. I own my own truck. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I even want to stay in this or want to get out of it. I think it's gonna get tight. I think uh, in I think inflation is gonna uh, raise a lot when it comes to interest rates on homes, interest rates on cars. I think grocery prices are gonna go even higher. I think a lot of people are going to lose their homes. I think a lot of people are going to lose uh, their high-end things. And I think we need to rebound and get things back to normal. I, th- I think it's crazy that we can send billions and billions of dollars to all these other countries, but we can't help our own and make sure things level out here. Yeah, but I think it's going to be yeah, tight. So if you got money, hold home, on to it. Right, right, right. And NBA. Hey, hey, hold on. Uh, uh, about the economy, if they don't figure out this debt ceiling thing, we're going to really be in trouble. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And you know it's another thing too is like these people these people don't understand how hey the the American truck the American trucking industry is like it seems like it's gonna fall it's gonna fall and if it do fall what are we gonna do yeah now yeah. you right how are we gonna get goods and services it's gonna be hard getting goods and services it's already it's already takes a long time to get right. goods and services yeah, now. Yeah, nobody's gonna be doing work for free out here. But they're trying to box you guys out oh, anyway because they're trying to create electric trucks that uh, electric eighteen wheelers that w- they won't actually need drivers. So I mean that's that's gonna be real yeah. tough on your industry. Let me ask you something: Do you trust a truck uh, a, a truck going down the road eighty thousand pounds with no driver in it? I don't. 
I don't. <laughs> but but if you see what they're doing on the, on the bridges and tolls, you know what I mean? There's no more people there anymore. Now it's all electric. So all those people lost their jobs. If you look at what they're doing in the trains and the buses, a lot of those people have, have lost yeah. their jobs. So it, it's going to be real difficult out there. Robots take yeah, over. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, 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 hey Envy, I got, a, um, I got an idea for you, though. I know you're still doing the, um, the, the, uh, the car show stuff, right? Yes, sir. All right, I know. I got. I got a crazy idea. Not a crazy idea. It's like, All right, well, stay on hold. Stay on hold. Why would you tell the stay world that idea, bro? Man. Stay you on ain't on even trademarking or nothing <laughs> yet. Right, I'm just sure. Stay on hold. Good. Hello, who's this? What's up, DJ Envy? This is Uber Mike. How y'all doing? Uber Mike. Uber what's Mike, up? Mike, what's happening, brother? Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, what's up, Jason Lee? How y'all doing? What up? What's happening? Hey, how Envy and Charlamagne. I wanted to thank y'all so much. Uh, I went and got my clothes last week. They found something. Damn. And so it's being tested now, yes. But I want to thank God for y'all second. How many polyps did you find? Three. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, but yep. it, it, but but I mean, they could tell if you had anything as of right now. Did you have anything as of right now? No, nothing right oh, now. That's no. good. Then oh, that's good. good. Yeah, they'll yeah, test yeah, the, they'll yeah, test yeah. those polyps, and then hopefully it comes back clean. If not, you, they found it early, and then they'll make sure that you. I guess they'll get you in about another uh, five to seven years to make sure nothing else pops back up. But you could have just saved your life, brother. That's right. The, the doctor said, I'll be, I need to come back in three years. So I'm like, wow, okay. How old are you? I'm 45. You got a history of it in your family? Nope, no history. Well, you're about to be a generational curse breaker. You're going to make sure nobody else got it moving forward. That's or at least right. They know to get tested. Thank God. I Jason? do want to thank y'all, man. Yeah, All got, love, brother. I just got it, too. Okay. You just got your colon colon yeah. me? They found two polyps. They found two polyps. I have to go back in three years, yeah, but they removed it. So. Any cancerous? Uh, no. No, that's perfect. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Power 1051. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host in the building, Jason Lee, of course, from Hollywood Unlocked. Up here stirring up trouble, per usual. Why? So if you just joined us, we were talking about... Uh, it started for Michael B. Jordan. It started because of Jason Lee, okay. right? Because Jason Lee... Uh, last week said that Michael B. Jordan was cheating on Lori Harvey. Allegedly. Allegedly. He said, you said you ran up on Lori somewhere. Yeah, I saw her at the um, Essence Festival. I just looked into her eyes and I saw a lot of pain. Damn. <laughs> and um, so now, what's the rumor? Well, no, the rumor now is that he's moved on to a white girl in the UK. And so now, you know, people are wondering how do black women feel when the runner up to the king of Wakanda <laughs> Jesus. leaves a black woman for a white girl? I or told Jason Lee last week Going around saying that Michael B. Jordan allegedly cheated on Lori Harvey was going to drive him back to the Caucasus Mountains. And look. <laughs> My goodness. Look. He well, out here with snow. Well, then you played a clip where he said everything is on the table. So everything. there you go. <laughs> well, let's go here to the are. phone line. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's up? What's up? This is Kay Royal. Hey, good morning, Mama. What do, what do you feel about uh, black men dating uh, white women, especially successful black men? Oh, I feel like that's a no for me. That's a hard no for me. Um... I was just explaining how I cut off somebody in my starting lineup because he let me know that he enjoys indulging in white women. First of all, you said your starting start lineup. lineup. <laughs> so how many? My how much you got in rotation? Just two right now. And they both black? <laughs> They both black. Look at you, Queen. Congratulations to you, yeah. Queen. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If in Wakanda 3, there was some weird way <laughs> oh that goodness. Michael B. Jordan could come back from the dead and be the king of Wakanda, could he be the king of Wakanda if his queen back home is white? No. No. What they say, what was the proverb? Um, 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 a house divided? Um, something about burning the forest down or something like that. <laughs> what? That, that's not going to happen. I ain't never heard that. It was like some, somebody from the village that don't feel the warmth of it or something will burn the village down. Mm. Hey, that's I'm what not, they said in the movie. Anyway. I'm not going to lie. I don't, know. I don't think that's going to work. I would love to leak that storyline to Dr. Yo, Umar. Say, Dr. Umar, Black Panther 3, they're going to have Black Panther son dating a white woman. What do you think about this? Stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> Man, I have a heart attack. <laughs> Hello, who's this? This is Chelsea calling from Houston. Chelsea from Houston. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to comment on you guys' this topic. Yes, ma'am. Okay, look, we do not mind anymore. I would say 10 to 15 years ago, we did. But now it's just kind of like, date who you want, just don't bash us out the door. I agree with that. I can't stand these brothers that, you know, have a preference for others, but then they got to disrespect black women in the process and talk about how terrible black women are. I can't stand that. 
Yeah, that's kind of like where we are about it. I'm 43, so that's kind of where we are, you know. So, shout out to you, Charlemagne, DJ Envy, Jason. We love you. We follow you on Hollywood Unlocked. Thank Keep you. doing your thing. Thank you. Hello, right. Queen. Hello? Hey, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Go ahead, Mike. I can hear the love for white women in your throat. <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear ahead, her. Mike. I can hear her driving the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, huh? indeed. Yes, indeed, my man. Talk up a little louder, Mike. We want to hear you clear when you. You can't talk too loud. as white woman will get upset. Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> All right, so check it, right? First thing I want to say, I love y'all more than show, man. Okay, All thank right. you. First thing I want to say. Do you love? So do you love us more than white women? I don't, I'm not a fan of interracial dating at all. Oh, okay. okay. We, we... Every time a black man is successful, he's a multi-millionaire, absolute star, whatever. I'm not a poor woman, but he made like a bartender, a hostess, and he takes care of their whole family. What? But when a white man dates what? a black woman, she's successful, if not more than he is. And I don't understand why every time we date outside our race, we are the ones that's always taking care of the other person, most likely. Are you saying that when black men date outside their race, they tend to date down? All the time, and especially when they multi-millionaires. I can name you at least five of them right now. Go ahead. You got Kobe Bryant with Vanessa, right? God bless the dead. Don't do that. She's, she's Latino, Latino, though, right? Isn't she Latino? Yeah, she's Latino. She's Latino. But she, yeah, but she's Caucasian Latino. <laughs> what? I what? like her, though. Oh, okay. Like There's nothing wrong with that. But he could have had red. That was successful. He said Brandy. He said Brandy. They just went to the prom, Michael but go ahead, bro. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Michael Jordan had a black queen at first. Yeah, it's, I then think he has two kids her. or three kids from a black then queen. Left her. Then he left her. You got the Rock. The who? The Rock. Is the Rock? The, the Rock not black? Is he? Johnson. The Rock is black. Is the Rock black? Yeah, yeah, just because his name Dwayne don't mean he black, <laughs> and his last name Dwayne Johnson. Johnson. He, he got a black name. Man, that look like we could be cousins. Okay. Nah, you say you you sound like y'all could be distant cousins, huh? But but what I'm saying is, who else? Um, you got the you got the guy who um, there's a lot. You got Kanye West. Oh, definitely. He's, yeah. a, he's a pink toe lover now. <laughs> he's but a what I'm saying is, yes, sir. <laughs> I don't have an issue with dating outside the race, right? But the issue is when you dating someone like a bartender or a hostess. <laughs> or a bartender. <laughs> Love is, love is love. Yeah, what is his problem with bartenders and hostess? <laughs> bartenders' lives matter. Jesus. Listen, I believe love is love, but I do prefer seeing black men with black women. No disrespect to interracial relationships. I'm just telling you what I like seeing because I just feel like, you know, uh, black men, black women, when they come together, they make strong black families. And we've seen how black families have been torn apart systemically throughout the years. So I, I, I do love seeing black men with black women. 800-585-1051. We're asking, uh, allegedly, Michael B. Jordan is dating a, a, a new woman and she's white. Do we have to say allegedly for that? <laughs> we probably just, right. He got just that white case. girl. Just in case. So we're asking, how do you feel about it? Call us now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800 585 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Everybody, it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have Jason Lee, our celebrity guest host, joining us. That's right. Now, if you're just joining us, Charlemagne uh, came up with this question. There ain't no Charlemagne came up with this question. <laughs> this all came up because of a series of things. Last week, Jason Lee... Uh, Said that he told Lori Harvey Michael B. Jordan was cheating on him. Yeah, I, that I heard that he was cheating on her. Yeah, that's what I heard. And I told him that rumor was going to drive Michael B. Jordan back to white women. And then this and morning, then you, and then you pulled up the receipt. See the rumor report. Now you pulled up the receipt no. that validated my concerns. And here we are. Well, let's hear what Michael B. Jordan said when he was on the Breakfast Club some years ago. You know, I spent a lot of time away from my family. I didn't really talk to my mom, my dad. You know what I'm saying? Or like my brothers and sisters and stuff like that. You know, I was. Uh, you know, I worked out a lot. It was a sad place, man. I just kind of like stayed to myself. And so the physical aspect was, that was the easy part. Mentally kind of going to that lonely place and willing to do whatever it takes to kind of free his people was the, not the, was the more challenging part. You know what I'm saying? But it was a lot of fun too. What about white women? Did you cut off white women during Come that Come on, day? man. Why, why was that go back there? I like women, period. All women. Everybody's on the table. Okay. <laughs> everybody's on the table. Everybody's on the table, man. Everybody. All lives matter. Oh my goodness. That's what he said. It's all on the table. It's all oh on the table, baby. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? T. T E A. Okay. What up, T? How do you feel about it, T? 
I will. Look, I was talking that Michael B. Jordan. Okay, he, he with the white girl, but you know they, they only go with the white girl because they say yes or not. Nah. But then when you go get a friend, a black friend, and they put her up on games, they're not gonna be together long. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> is it in the black girl <laughs> training manual? Okay. Wait, wait, is it in the black girl training manual to just say no? No, it's just that it's, it's only certain things that we going to do as far as to <clears throat> boost the man's ego. If it's something stupid of his idea, we going to tell him. Most men don't like that. The mm. white women going to say, yeah, honey, go ahead and do it. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and put all your money in the crypto, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, who's this? And what up? I'm calling from Houston. Lola, what's up from Houston? Talk to us. Yeah, I'm calling about the topic, about the men dating white women. Okay. And I think I speak on behalf of all, because when I say we don't care who they date, orange, green, purple, black, yellow, red, just keep our name out your mouth. You know, don't try to directly correlate it some, it went in some kind of way to black women while you're doing it. If that's what you want to do, enjoy yourself, go ahead. We don't care. That, you know what, that, your sentiment is a sentiment I see a lot of sisters express, and it's like, yo, we don't really care who you date, but just don't bash us in the process. Exactly. Don't make it seem like we did something to you, the reason why you stepping out of your race. And then, it's other, it's other, it's many other ethnicities and many other, you don't have to go to a white woman. Like, that's just a personal choice. But like I said, we don't care what you decide. Just keep our name out your mouth while you're doing it. Yeah, and don't tell me what sisters did to you because you don't care what that white woman's granddaddy did to your ancestors. I was just thinking about that scene in Waiting to Exhale. Remember when Angela Bassett went and ripped up the whole closet and burned everything because he left her for a white woman? Oh, that was a white woman? Yeah. I ain't watched Waiting to Exhale in a minute. I Long know he left for a white woman. That's Hello? why I'm here. Hello, who's this? Happy New Year's. Porter Party Guy, what's happening? Sean Stone hey, is Sean, name. Man, Sean Stone, Sean How you Stone, doing, man? Sean Stone, what's up, brother? Now, Sean Stone, you still, good, you still dating that white woman? I never date white woman, brother. I, I am a black man that loves my black queen. You know what I mean? So I think Michael B. Jordan needs to find a black woman and hold on tight to her. You feel me? Well, he was with Miss Harvey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't. I think Rory Harvey is just a player right now, bro. She just, you know, she probably gonna move on from that black dude soon too. Oh, drop on the clues bomb for Lori Harvey. Yeah, Lori Harvey, Lori Harvey yeah. definitely out here collecting uh, uh black Hollywood yeah. actors like Pokemon yeah. cards. She is. Oh, she is. Man. Hey, hey, Jason Lee, what's up, man? What's good? I'm good, man. I'm Sean Stone, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, sir. Sound like you flirting, I'm a Sean. One guy. <laughs> Definitely not flirting with Jason Lee. I, I like Jason Lee. He's a cool you dude. Don't no matter if he's gay or straight. You have a lot of straight male friends. You know that, right? I have a lot of male friends who are straight. I'm one of them. Yeah. Well, well yeah. <laughs> we don't know about that one. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, man, drop on the clues bomb for Mighty Casey. Now is a great time <laughs> to play Mighty Casey. Oh, my goodness. You want to okay. play a clip of Mighty Casey? That's right. And salute to Michael B. Jordan. The B may stand for Bunny. All right? Or the B can stand for Black Woman. It's all up to him and the choices that he makes from here on out. My okay? Goodness. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Your company has goals this year. Find the right people to help you achieve them with ZipRecruiter, where four out of five employers get a quality candidate within the first day. Try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. It's amazing. We really haven't had a chance as black women in this industry mm -hmm. to be leads. We were always the girlfriends, the meter maid, the, the prostitute. Yeah, you know Kim, me. That's Kim's story. That's Kim's story. <laughs> that's Kim's story. That's Kim's story. This is the first time we get to come together and actually have stories that are about us. You know, it's, yep. we're driving. It's, it's us getting a job. It's mm -hmm. us taking a, a driver's test, whatever it is. And that's new. And then all three of us are on equal footing. We all get to lead and carry this show and support each other. And, it's and we're blessing. real yes. friends. But we're real friends. We yeah. go to each other's houses. We yeah. hang out. Yeah. We borrow each other's wigs. You know, no, we just, don't borrow each other's <laughs> Steal steal you ain't just borrow nasty. nothing. You just be taking stuff. You do steal her wigs. I'll show you. What's the next question, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to ask. <laughs> you know, it was interesting what you said about uh, not being the lead because to us, even though the show was called Martin, it's, mm -hmm. Gina is still the you lead. You got kind of the lead. You were kind of the lead as well. And, it wasn't no kind of. She was yeah. a lead. And no, my, and my wife and cool. kids, you the wife. You know, the way that I look at that, though, like I love being the support system to mm -hmm. anybody. Like I love to watch people win. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even with my sisters on the mm -hmm. show, like we'll give each other jokes. Uh, jokes. Like yes. say this to me or say this to mm -hmm. the yeah, camera. Do this when you walk 
out the door. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. We want the other person to win, and and I love being the support system. It's like a it's like a dance to me. It's like mm-hmm. a waltz to me when I can see a comedian because you know comedians can be really big or they can be really small. So when they go mm-hmm. big, I ground the scene. It's it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I love mm-hmm. and I learned a lot. And I'm talking about this now because I've I've said it in a couple of interviews, but I really realized how much Damon and Martin's comedic ability. gifts ability. Thank you. Mm-hmm affected me Mm -hmm. like when I'm working on this show I try to put the pieces of the puzzle together Allison and and the rest of the writers are so good they Mm -hmm. really lay it out it's there on a page but I like finding the funny in between the lines because that's what Martin was great at Mm -hmm. he was really brilliant because he would find some and he's ad-libbing at all times Mm -hmm. so I find that my comedic style is really similar and then watching Damon his comedic intellect is sort of like he's so witty and so smart I had that on your show remember that yeah yeah, you said get ready for him I did wife and kids I played her best friend Mm -hmm. and uh, she told me she was like get ready I was like what you mean get ready she said Damon he gonna say some things you got to be ready for him yeah and you were right I thought I had him I was killing it killing it he came back on me I shut up said where the lines let me (laughs) the comedic (laughs) intellect is is so so high like Dave Chappelle you know what Mm -hmm. I mean so I learned a lot from them do y'all hate being typecast where they feel like you know everybody's gonna call you Gina for the rest of your life do you hate that no no it doesn't bother you I love it really Yes, absolutely. Because that means that it, like they said, it made it some type of yeah. okay. impact. Like, uh, well, that's cute. It's Gina. like the Brady Bunch. It gotta get annoying sometimes. It, no, only by my son, because he calls me Gina all day. Hilarious. Gina, can you oh. make me something that's to eat? Hilarious. Gina, See, can that's, you? That's, that's that's like I was me. in the mall the other day. I passed by DL Hughley. <laughs> And Go I was like, DL, do I? No, 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 Gina, like Gina, get over here, Gina. Look at this, Gina. And I was like, if you call me Gina one more time, I'm gonna kick your butt. And he started cracking up, and that's the only reason. That's the last name I'm gonna say. <laughs> Only sugar. I love it. Sugar. It's, it's sugar, let me tell you something. It gets on your nerves because it's always some man. Auntie Sugar. <laughs> sugar. With, with, with all of y'all resumes in the business, do y'all still run into struggles and like obstacles in, in the industry? Absolutely. That's oh, what sure. I mean. That's the whole point of Act Your Age is yeah. that this is the first time we get to come together and be fully ourselves on a, on a show, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that's new. Before this time, it was always a bit of struggle because nobody was writing for you. Nobody understood you. Nobody cared about what happens to black women in this industry mm-hmm. as they write mm-hmm. we're always coming in I'll, I'll say this most of my shows I'm asking the white girl I, I, I'll enjoy your date I, oh you're so pretty I think you're great everything is about them mm-hmm. there's no questions about well how my husband doing on the show what my kid mm-hmm. doing on the show on this show on Act Your Age we all take care of each other can I say where they can find it in case of course, they don't know? Of course. <laughs> if you go to bounce tv.com forward slash find us you can find where the show is it is literally floating in the air it's everywhere so please support it's us yeah. absolutely, you absolutely. Find please support show. us because the thing is if we have this show then we get to make more of these shows absolutely. and right. our show is universal so those are, everybody's yeah, gonna so like it so those that are watching mm-hmm. that are not black or of a certain age please understand this show is for you too because uh-huh. we're talking about real issues we have two wonderful young actors Nathan and Anderson and Mariah Robinson that are on the show. So we got in. something for the for no. the Gen Zs and mm-hmm. the millennials as well. And I it's promise it's a and it's two in you are going show. to enjoy these, this show. I these promise. These two are fools. Yeah, we, to my these life. three are fools. But I have struggled. <laughs> Look, I went back to me. I have struggled. <laughs> I have, all my life I had the struggle. All my life. I had the struggle. Thank you, Charlotte. I got the blame. Okay, I'm not going to say it again. Now, is there any part that you guys Yeah, you just cut her off she's trying to talk about her struggle? You see what I'm talking about? No, he got I know she's talking about. She's about to say the slave thing again. He got out of there. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Is there any part that you guys passed up and was like, damn, I shouldn't have passed up? Ooh, I was supposed to be on the show Lost. And I was dating this dude. We had to move to Hawaii. And he was like, we ain't going to Hawaii. Well, what he he didn't have to go. I, I know, but I was engaged at the time. That was one of uh, my no. several. Damn. And I was like, I, but I want to go and do Lost. So I remember I was like, well, JJ, do you have anything else? I, I don't know if I, I... And I just didn't see the black woman on the plane crash in the jungle with the monsters. I didn't yeah. know what I was going to do. I felt like my part was going to get smaller and smaller because I'm a run for real. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it 
was it was uh, I remember JJ Abrams. We had this talk. I never forget when he showed me the script. This was mm-hmm. before it was on TV. I did like this. I said. <laughs> Like, this is Gilligan's Island. What else you got? <laughs> I promise you, I had no idea loss oh, would be as huge. huge. Wow. So that thing hurts me. So that's that's my story. You know, I this when I say this role, y'all gonna be like, I, I first of all, I know that I never would have got it. I also didn't audition for it. I was supposed to go in for Tiffany Haddish's role in Girls Trip, mm. oh. and I and, I, and we all know it can't nobody do that role but Tiffany. And but I read the script, and y'all now know me, little baby Jesus. Mm. There's no way I could have played the role. Mm. And so I just kindly said, you know, I don't think I'm the right one for this. And then I watch it blow up and I see Tiffany's career but that is one that I was supposed to go in for you yeah I was supposed to have a meeting with either Abbott Elementary or this other pilot Mm -hmm. I chose the pilot that went as well it did go but it didn't get picked Picked up up. okay yep yeah this is a completely different show Mm -hmm. but yeah I don't remember which role Janelle Janelle? I don't remember which role but I I know which role I went in for which one Janelle. Janelle, oh, the principal. Cool. Oh, man. But Janelle, I didn't get an audition. Janelle on that. But she's I can see really Kim being that principal, too. Yeah. But Janelle is incredible. She's she's really is. Is. She's she's really really is. What makes you horrible in an audition? Because you, you, you uh, audition. Being yourself. So you know. Don't study. Don't study. Oh, you didn't study. So you just <laughs> went well, to I, 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 There was a lot going on. And the kid was running around. And, and this was at a time when the pandemic, it was on Zoom. Oh, That's I hate those. Very oh, difficult. Man. I have gone through this uh, industry by letting God just whatever, mm-hmm. you know, happens. Mm-hmm. That's for me. All right, we got more with Tisha Campbell, Kim Whitley, and Yvette Nicole Brown when we come back. The new series, Act Your Age. We'll be back as The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Portia Williams, our co-host, is here. And we're still kicking it with Tisha Campbell, Kim Whitley, and Yvette Nicole Brown. Mm-hmm. Do y'all understand the impact that you guys have on culture? Do y'all ever sit back and say how great you were for us growing up and what you meant to us as kids and teens and growing up and just the things that we've seen in all the shows? Do y'all ever realize well, first how big of all, it was? I don't, when you say you grew up with me, how old are you? Exactly. That, that sounds bad because you, you look like you're 56. So. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, I'm just I'm just playing. Go ahead. You cute and little. I forget it now. No, no, no. But do y'all ever do y'all ever understand that? No, because we were just we just trying to pay our bills and take care of our families. I think that was you don't think about that. I think for me think about that. For me it was a concern because I started on Drake and Josh, which is a kid's show. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of feel like when you put yourself out there and say, I am in front of the babies, you should live a life that if as they watch you, you know, you don't do anything that makes them feel crazy. So I try to make conscious decisions when I'm on camera. I get a little naughty in a voiceover. So if you mm-hmm. see me in an animation, ain't no telling. Oh, gotcha. But if you see Shea my Bilen. face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that no, Jay Pollen is really sweet. That's mm-hmm. more. That's for the kids. But there's some stuff coming where it's going to be a little rough okay. for the babies. Mm-hmm. But if you see my face, I want you to be able to go, that's Helen, and not go, what is Helen doing? So I feel like as... We hear this all the time from performers. Well, I'm not a role model. You are, and you may mm-hmm. not want to be. You may not like that you are, but when you put yourself in the public space and there's a, a spotlight on you and you're on a platform, people are paying attention to what you say and do. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you're fine with it. I care. You hear that, Kim? I want the babies. Uh, you already... You already got you three times. That's what three for him to know. Show me. I was having a flashback. Dang on, I was playing sugar. But this is the thing. Let me say this. Let me say this. So every wait, time, you guys. Everybody, everybody okay. got to know what their call is. Mm-hmm. What what I've been called to do mm-hmm. is different from what you've been called to do. And there's no judgment with what you do. Your path is your path. My path is my path. So I'm not sitting back going. Everybody needs to do this. I'm saying this is what I'm supposed to do mm-hmm. and I got, I take care of this right? and everybody else should take care of this you know what I mean and the world but, will be better if you just focus on you, you did this right but it is part of the culture I think about my first movie next Friday mm-hmm. think about my things Absolutely. that we have done because people do you come up through. and they're like we didn't oh know my gosh you know, I had that. no idea I was like oh I got oh, I'm going to be with Mike Evans I'm going to be with mm-hmm. you you're mm-hmm. excited but you don't realize you're absolutely right mm-hmm. what it does uh, with the culture and in life and, and like seeing you know seeing, seeing people and he's excited that's that's it. That's, that's, your, you, that's, that's your legacy. You it. That's I your think legacy. When I, when I saw mm-hmm. myself in the African American Smithsonian, wow, that was. I, I mm-hmm. literally you just cried. Gonna throw that? You just gonna say that? No, no, no. That's Why a wonderful thing she shared. I'm, 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 I'm on the Smithsonian somewhere. I wrote my name in the bathroom. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> you say the Smithsonian? No, yeah. it really shocked me, and I literally cried because I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know that mm-hmm. it was gonna mm-hmm. be there. I was thinking that when we came in and looking at this wall. Imagine coming in here and seeing yeah, your face see on this wall like you know yeah. that you I, I'm here 
I'm still here. I'm mm-hmm. here. Right. I was here. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's it's that feeling we all want that. And some people through their children they have that. Some people mm-hmm. through their work they have mm-hmm. it. And it's great that we get to leave leave a, a footprint. We for, were in this yeah, industry. For me, I, it was always a grind. I was always on a grind, so I wasn't looking up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was running mm-hmm. and I was concentrated on paying bills. I've been paying bills since I was five years old. Mm-hmm. So I was concentrating on helping family or helping myself mm-hmm. and, and getting us into a better space. And just now I'm starting to, at, at the age that I am, really like look around as it's happening. I'm in the moment. Right. I'm present in it. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't before. And it was a friend of mine named Berkeley. And oh, he, Berkeley. Had, yeah, mm-hmm. he had made me more conscious of living in the moment because I would say random stuff yeah. like oh yeah when I made um Thanksgiving dinner for Tupac and he was like you can't just say you made Thanksgiving dinner for Tupac and I was like oh that's not like normal no right. no not right. normal right. 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 I don't want to hear the story yeah, right. I don't hear the story no, no it was just like me Dwayne and he came over and we all just had like was that in New Jersey into, LA New no York? I was in LA mm-hmm. but th- long story short like I was like oh I get it because I worked with Pam Greer one time and Pam mm-hmm. Greer would throw out all these stories and mm-hmm. I would call them now we call them PG Pam Greer stories and she was like yeah when I was in in bed with Yoko and John and, and Richard Pryor and we were mm-hmm. making music all night I was like you can't just say you was <laughs> just in the bed that's what it sounds wild making yeah, music but that's just our life just like it's just your life exactly yeah, yeah. so it, it, now I was like okay I'll be more conscious of it so now I'm in a place where this is actually happening mm-hmm. we're, I'm with these amazingly talented friends, friends that yeah. Are have that I've admired and that I love. But I want to know why Pac ain't had nowhere to go for Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, How you I, with y'all? Like, I got no I got it, was, it was a bunch of us. Like I, I used to have like really big parties. Now my parties are like two, three people. Right. But I used to have parties. like like I a lot of. I used time. to cook a lot. Mm-hmm. I I used to cook a lot, and so people <laughs> would just come over. Do you remember what you made? Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. Mac and cheese. Like the same What's up with that mac and cheese? Yeah. I, I cook for like thirty people, yeah. like uh, you know, every single time. That's so something like, I've never heard. Time. All the pocket stories you've heard, I've never heard. Damn, Tupac was at a Thanksgiving dinner. You never. Know, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he eats pocket. I'm, I know yeah, that, but you just never heard. Enjoy the meal. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. How, did, how, did, how did you and Sherry handle uh, the Monique situation after y'all talked about the reading and she didn't like that? Did y'all reach out to her? Or? Well, like what I said was, I'm gonna be in St. Louis at the Grand. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Metro tickets. <laughs> but the truth is this we love Monique mm-hmm. and and when we were talking this is just the truth we're giving her flowers that is the truth mm-hmm. she is an awesome actress mm-hmm. and in this She's movie the best we got. I was screaming I was like dang we miss her like mm-hmm. miss her on screen mm-hmm. and and that's the truth mm-hmm. we love her she's mm-hmm. funny me and her used to be best friends mm-hmm. and I can't say anything that sometimes and we not gonna say nothing we, bad about bad, people it, 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 right, these are just, our sisters yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? and I think and, 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 and it's the thing I think that's the, the quick trigger right where everybody just I gotta, I gotta would you hear what I'm, listen to what they actually said though mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and, and also and if it came out wrong because sometimes you misspeak then appreciate the love when the love is said that's that's the truth and that's the truth we mm-hmm. love every I don't know mm-hmm. any black actress in this industry that does not love and revere Monique mm-hmm. she is one She's, of the best that we got absolutely she and really so that is. is the truth the little comments or stuff that came out wrong mm. or whatever that's we gonna have some grace and extend mm. some grace and we gonna move on but the truth love her yeah. all and of the us the truth is that she it. is anything she's in she's great she, I'm like dang she if I got a little yeah. bit of that she does mm-hmm. she puts it down whatever mm-hmm. the other and she looks out for she, people too I remember yeah. when I first got into business I mm-hmm. couldn't get arrested mm-hmm. nobody would ever let me do talk shows mm-hmm. she had the talk, her talk show down in Atlanta mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. said I, I want this girl to come I want her to come she had just mm-hmm. won her Golden Globe brought mm-hmm. the Golden Globe out she said Yvette hold this so you can feel what it's like when it's your turn it ain't been my turn in a very long time ever but <laughs> she wanted me to see what it feels like that is her heart mm-hmm. you know what I mean that's mm-hmm. the heart of Tisha that's the heart of Kim that's the heart of Sherry It's that's what the truth is so let's let's dig on down and get to what the meat of the bone is and it's love and respect. All right, well, don't move. We got more with Tisha Campbell, Kim Whitley, and Yvette Nicole Brown. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Portia Williams, our co-host, is here. And we're still kicking it with Tisha Campbell, Kim Whitley, and Yvette Nicole Brown. Charlamagne? Is it hard being in this era where everything is so criticized and like the criticism comes immediately through social media? 
Ooh, say that. Yeah, I, think smart. I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a quick, attention. it's a quick trigger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think, I think there's not enough grace. I think you can give some people grace. People make mistakes sometimes. They misspeak. Yeah. They, they go somewhere they didn't know was going to be happening, and just mm-hmm. give. Because you got to imagine, what if it was me? What if I slipped up and did that or said that? And the thing is, is there an apology? If somebody messes up, do they feel bad about it? Do mm-hmm. they come to you and say, Ah, I missed the mark? Because mm-hmm. you want somebody to extend that grace to you when you miss the mark. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, now, if we're talking about racism and we talking about MAGA and stuff like that, I'm throwing elbows. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. But yeah. if it's simply a mistake uh, b- between friends or someone that doesn't know you, they speak out of turn, I think it's important to extend a little grace. You ever watch those old movies and say, so give There's Kim no way grace. We did it. Say Thank right now? You. <laughs> you ever watch those old movies? Like, I was watching Trading Places on a plane, right? Uh, Eddie Murphy. My uncle was in that film. And some of the words that they were saying, I was like, boy, would they Couldn't get canceled now. Do it now. They can't say those and words. Look what they were doing that, in the 70s on Good Times and all those shows. But that's, 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 that's a about. Kim question because Kim is on stage mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. you know, they're comedians. So I appreciate that. And matter, matter of fact, I have a where show in St. Louis at, at the be. Grand Day. Oh, okay. my God. March 10th. That's Metro, why I was trying to get tickets. Get your tickets at MetroTix.com. St. Louis. That's right. Grand Deal. Now, can you answer the damn question? First of all, I don't know if you can cuss on the radio. You can. You can. So, look here. Let me tell you about my ass. No, um, you know what it is about this show? That's the great thing about Act Your we said it, it is a, I guess, a go back, a flashback to the old sitcom times because we take chances on this show. Yes, we do. We say yeah. things that. And uh, that's what makes it current. Mm-hmm. Right. That we take it to the edge because that's what's missing in comedy right now. It, do you remember the old sitcom? They would say anything oh to Jefferson. The Jeffersons? Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. All in the family. I mean, Kim, the family. Is, Kim is masturbating in the second the, episode. Well, I, I, I am. What? The character, the character well, is. Yeah. The character. Her, her character. Oh, her character. Was that on sorry. camera or off camera? When y'all saw me? No. So it does. So God, now, for Kim, real Kim. comedy, you got to live in truth. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to say it, and that's what's mm-hmm. even missing. Except for like David Chappelle and certain comics, mm-hmm. you have to be able. Funny is when you say what other people are thinking. That's right. Mm-hmm. And you got to be smart about it too. Get, like you got to. Like really, I just said, yeah. and y'all mm-hmm. caught me. See, but mm-hmm. let me tell you something. Ten years ago, y'all wouldn't have said that. You'd have been like, ah. Mm-hmm. You're so crazy, but we're so right, nervous because but we're y'all so looking nervous. out for we're me. You're like, you can't say that. Right. You better not say that. You can't. We know what you meant when you said it. Right. We, we know, know how she people gonna take it out of context. Yeah. Yeah. People gonna take it. That mm-hmm. is Absolutely. the truth, and that'll be the headline. We trying to make the headline accurate. But your age. that's what we're talking about. The, that's the problem. Yeah. So, in mm-hmm. accurate age, uh, Allison Faust really lets us go there, mm-hmm. and we go there, and we all like, ooh, is this gonna be? And standards, standards and practice, they allow us to go. So, you know, big ups to to bounce and script. Yeah, and MGM, all of them that mm-hmm. really say, let the girls go. Right. Mm-hmm. It's funny. And we talk about Allison real life. To create that too. But right. I appreciate that because that is the truth. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what uh, the podcast, Two Funny Mamas, is all about. <laughs> Peace I mean, you you, if you oh, talk pitching. about me putting out another, I mean, pitching you plug. Can I talk about you that? She know what she's supposed to do. She know what she's supposed to do. She know what she's supposed to do. I mean, what can I do? Can I pitch my two cup of That's what you're here to do. Act Your Age have two amazing animated shows. I have uh, My Dad the Bounty Hunter. It's a black family in space on Netflix. It's Laz Alonzo and Yvonne Orji. And I saw two that. amazing yep. kids. It's so amazing. You start watching, you're going to binge the whole thing. That's mm-hmm. My Dad the Bounty Hunter. And then Shape Island, you mentioned earlier. It's a great show for young people, but not just for young young kids. And it's a, a, a circle, a square, and a triangle on an island. And they have a lot of differences, and they have to learn to live together. And if we do that more in the world, we'll be great. So that's Shape Island on Apple TV Plus as well. Oh, yeah, and yeah, Act Your Age on Bounce. The t-shirt you got uncoupled. That, that uncoupled got uncoupled is back. Uncoupled they got renewed. Back. Showtime's picking it up, right? Showtime That's is dope. picking it up. I'm really, I'm really, it was such a dope show. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was hoping that this particular show could do the, a smidgen of what Pose did. You know, yes. like really affect everybody and mm-hmm. make the norm norm. And you know, in places in the Midwest or in the Bible Belt, you mm-hmm. know, we were hoping that we could affect people and and people would like and it. The and, hope is still there. And the back. hope is still yes, there. So we're shooting back. in New York. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. gonna be in these streets, I'll be New York, with y'all. Right. That's right. right. <laughs> I, need to ask so wait, I got it. One more thing. Oh, another one. I got another show coming out. I think it's today mm-hmm. uh, on Hulu with Wanda Sykes called History of the World. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about Kim on Audible? What about and that's Kim? That's right. I do have my pod, sitcom podcast. Sitcom podcast. So she never called asked Audible. Kim on, on Audible. Okay. She showed an answer. It was no. Number. It was in the top ten. Oh on my there you black go. Hey. Oh, oh, I got it. Let me tell you about these shoes I got. I need to ask one last question, especially with you being from Newark. So were you guys, quote unquote, corny? growing up being in the arts 
this question, of course, comes from Michael B. Jordan, where they said he was uh, corny growing up. You're from Newark, so you know the area. First, I was oh, and Yvette already had something to say about that. I saw you just on social media. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. I don't know. I, listen, I, bullies bother me. Mm-hmm. People that just go out of their way to make people feel small. And, and this is the thing. I remember when Tabitha Brown said this phrase, and this is really universal when it comes to bullies. Mm-hmm. What pain you must be in to wake up on a day and go, I'm going to I'm gonna find something and teach. I don't like, well, yo, you go, hey, Fedora. You know what I mean? Like, why do you have to hey, come? Hey, Fedora. Hey, what I'm saying? Hey, why she you was waiting for that one. She was waiting for that one. She was waiting for that one. Hey, 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 what's up? Who she's going to do? Waiting for that one. Oh, I'm going in love with Fedora. Don't do that. Put it back on. Your hair looks good to work, man. Take it off. Girl, I'm going to pull that out of the room with a cane with it. But the idea that people go out of their way to find something that they think will really harm somebody and drill in. And I didn't mind what 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 Michael did on that carpet. People were like, well, he was. No, she was unkind to him years ago. And she thought she was going to roll up now that he didn't made it. <laughs> no, babe, I, I see you. And he wasn't rude. Oh, he was just this. like, mm-hmm. I see you. And, and I remember you used to call me corny, right? So mm-hmm. so why you got the mic in my face? Oh, That's even harder remember. than what he said. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes you got to snatch a wig and be like, listen, we, we trying to do this right. But let me tell you when you missed the mark, because, again, it's not about just forgiving and, and everybody. Sometimes you got to tell somebody, I don't appreciate that. I feel like now that I'm older, mm-hmm. yeah. my haters were my motivators. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I look back on the people that said things to me and I remember oh, saying that's me. That's me. I'm going to show you. Yeah, if right. I didn't have them, same thing. I might not have had that fuel. Oh, me and you right. the same. Me and you right the same. Right same. But I, I took that fuel, and it's so funny. I remember, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Here we go. Truthfully. Truth. 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 Honestly speaking. Let me just go on and tell the truth. Because I never said this out loud. But what I, and this wasn't a hater, but I, me and Gerald LeBert, of course, were very good friends and close. And I remember mm-hmm. on my journey mm-hmm. to Hollywood, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do this and that. And Gerald brought me out to Hollywood and mm-hmm. I went to Soul Train with her. And that's when I got to meet the people at 227. And everything happened. And I remember Gerald looked at me and he was like, mm. he said, you know, there can only be one star in this family. I was like, oh, I can't do what I need to do. But what it did for me was say, Oh, okay. No, I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. Which might, if you wanted to be with a man, maybe I should. I should have been like, okay, I'll be a wife. But it fueled me, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, so it's going to be like that. I said, like, you, you watch. I can do this. Yeah. He didn't understand because I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't see the potential mm-hmm. in me. But as I my star rose, we we got close, and he was like, okay, I see you, mm-hmm. I see you, wow. and we started doing things together, mm-hmm. and really. He said, I didn't know that you can actually do this. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that's it in cool. you. That's so cool. that that's when I say that kind of thing. When he's mm-hmm. when the people dope. say stuff like that. Not that he was a hater. Mm-hmm. He just mm-hmm. was like, hey. He didn't see it. Yeah. Right. He, he didn't, didn't see, see you. Mm-hmm. I'm telling a lot on well, this show. Not, you can stop yourself at any time. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> so I after A comes out you go. on Saturday. Absolutely. We got to get Kim up here by ourselves so nobody stops the Gerald LaVert story. I got to get you. Don't you come here without somebody helping you. He's going to get you. Tisha Campbell, Aventico, Kim Whitley. Thanks, guys. Make sure you check out At Your Age on Bounce TV. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Y'all, that was great. It was fun. This going to be a donkey because right now you want some real donkey shots. It's time for donkey of the day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, man, hit me with the heat. Did she get donkey today? Please tell me. I have become donkey of the day. The Breakfast Club, bitches. You're a donkey. Yes, donkey of the day goes to a former Louisiana deputy named Dennis Perkins. Now, last year, I gave his wife donkey of the day for doing some of the sickest stuff I have ever heard in my life. Did you forget? Do you need a refresher? Well, let's flash back to WBRZ ABC2 for the report, please. In a shocking development, Perkins agreed to a plea deal, admitting her involvement in a child rape. But her defense says the real monster in this case is yet to be tried. The former teacher taking a surprise plea deal Monday instead of facing a jury. Pleading guilty to one count of production of child porn, one count of second degree rape, and one count of mingling of substances. Originally facing more than 70 counts, the attorney general's office agreeing to cut that down only if she agreed to testify against her ex-husband, Dennis Perkins. 
The couple are accused of filming and raping a child as well as feeding treats tainted with Dennis's semen to Come her students now. back in 2019. Mm-mm. Yes, you heard right. Uh, Dennis Perkins and his wife Cynthia were indicted on 150 sex crime related charges, including but not limited to providing semen cream filling for cupcakes and feeding them to children. My God, they was putting baby batty in the big wheels. OK, this ball bar from the brownie bites. Everybody look alive. OK, these holes done ruin the hostess, man. All right. And what makes this story nuts literally is that the vanilla cream filling that be in these delicious ass treats like Twinkies, that butter, powdered sugar and marshmallow cream that comes together to create this delightful sensation in your mouth. When you young, playful and immature, it reminds people of the clam sauce. And Dennis and his wife, Cynthia, were synchronized in their sickness because they decided to put their cock snot in the cupcakes. OK, I would tell these folks find God, but God not lost. They are. All right. Now, Cynthia, uh, the wife who I gave donkey of the day to, pled guilty to second degree uh, rape, production of child porn and conspiracy of mingling harmful substances. We just heard that uh, as part of her plea deal. Sixty eight of her 72 charges were dropped and she agreed uh, to, I think, not testify to testify against it. To testify against her husband uh, She was sentenced to 41 years in prison And I'm sure inmates of the prison she's in Are praying She don't become the correctional cook Oh lord Please No kitchen job for Cynthia Okay Can you imagine her Preparing And, and, and serving Food to other inmates Cynthia Perkins A cook in a woman's prison Ugh the red badge of courage would absolutely be the secret ingredient in the tomato sauce. Now, Cynthia filed for divorce from her husband following their arrest, saying that he had manipulated her into committing the crimes. And he was in court on Monday where he faced 78 charges. What will happen to a man who was voluntarily putting his dong water in the ding dongs? Let's go to the report, please. With his head turned away from our cameras, Dennis Perkins entered the courthouse for the final time. The much-anticipated trial, set to begin next week, canceled in light of Perkins' guilty plea. A deal the prosecution wasn't expecting. When he and his wife, Cynthia, were arrested in 2018, Perkins was facing more than 150 counts. He pleaded guilty today to seven, including rape, sexual battery of a child, video voyeurism, production of child porn, and one count of the mingling of harmful substances. Part of the reason the AG's office accepted the deal was to spare the public from what prosecutor Barry Milligan called some of the worst evidence he's ever seen. Sentenced to 100 Mm. years and as part of the plea deal, Perkins waived any right to appeal, probation or parole. A hundred years. Thank God we didn't have to hear the details of that evidence. Nobody needed to know how he was filling these hostess products with high fructose porn syrup. But because of his crimes against children, and cupcakes he accepted a hundred year prison sentence i do not like that word accepting when it comes to prison sentences there's no prison sentence that anybody's accepting especially one that's a hundred years this is what y'all are giving him and this is what he's taking because he has no choice okay a hundred year prison sentence but damn it this man deserves every single second and i hope he keeps that same energy in prison because there's some homies in there that's thirsty okay and they don't want that gentleman's relish out the jar all right. They don't want that. They don't want that out the in the cupcakes. All right. They want that nut butter scrape from the tap. All right. No, Dennis, don't get shy now. You're going to be in there serving up penis coladas to everyone. And rightfully so. Please let Remy Ma give Dennis Perkins the biggest hee haw. Hee haw. Hee haw. You stupid mother. Are you dumb? Mm hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today, sir. Mm hmm. The Breakfast Club. It's freaky Friday. It's freaky. Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Jason Lee, of course, from Hollywood Unlocked. Now, we're asking, well, let's start it right. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky freaky Friday. Now, the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question comes from Rockman Dunbar. Of course, he's an actor. You know him from Soul Food and Girlfriends. Uh, He put up a post. 50 years old today. He turned 50 on January 11th. He said, 30 years in this business, never sold my soul or my ass bleep. All right, real guy, buddy, original black man energy. So we're asking, 800-585-1051, we're taking it from him, and we're saying, have you ever traded sex for something, a position, something to advance your career, anything? That's what we're asking. Now, when we left up, we were talking to Charlemagne. Well, stories like this are triggering uh, for one reason to me, and that's Why? because when I was eight, I would get molested by an older woman. 
Okay, mm-hmm. I told y'all this story before. I made her stop because I didn't like the smell of her Jerry Curl. And when I made her stop, she stopped showing me the love and appreciation she would show me, you know, prior to that. So, you know, prior to that, I was her favorite. But when I made her stop, I was ugly and bad, all types of stuff. So because she couldn't get what she wanted from me anymore, she started treating me effed up. So, yeah, I've been in situations like that uh, in this business where a woman would make it seem like if I didn't do what she wanted me to do sexually, mm. she, you know, she she would fire me. And, and, when, and, 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 and when I didn't do that for her anymore, you know, when I didn't do that for her anymore, she they, they, they did start treating me after. Now, I'm not throwing shots or trying to make jokes, but there's an iconic picture of you sitting on... Shut up. No, that's not... No. All right, Jason that's disrespectful. Lee. Now you're being disrespectful. I'm just asking a question. No, you're not, I, now you're now, being disrespectful. Now now I know more. I gotta know about the picture. He's being disrespectful. There's a picture of of Wendy Williams. No, and Charlamagne no. sitting on her lap. No, just hot. No, no. But you ever sit on somebody's lap? No. You and never I'm, sat on nobody's lap, Jason no. Lee. I mean, I'm thinking Santa Claus. Santa. I mean, <laughs> but Santa. And you know why you sat on his lap? Because you wanted something. Santa wasn't filling my ass though. Nah, nah, nah. Ain't never been a, a, a oversized white man whose lap I wanted to sit on for sexual pleasure. Let's <laughs> oh be very goodness. clear. Yeah, but no. Um, Wendy, like, stop doing that. That was that just ask a question. Wendy. You just show me the answer. You know what's so crazy? I was listening to you guys talk about this. At first, I, I dismissed like this is a stupid topic, and then I thought I actually did do that before. Really? Yeah, I wrote about it in my book. But you know, I'm not ashamed about it. This is when I was. Get, I was um, curious This is back When I was dating girls I was curious about sleeping with guys And I slept with my friends my, I slept with my homegirl's boyfriend For a bunch of CDs It was on some just Just on the word Ho S Also oh, yeah, the CDs That used to come in the little The CDs. little book jacket Yeah like CD But it was a whole collection well, of what CDs What CDs did you get? Did it, was it uh, anything it was good? probably TLC I don't know it was, was it worth it? No it wasn't worth it It was my excuse to be You know A hoe But yeah <laughs> TLC no, I, I, I'm not loving I, I, had to do that but let's, let's go to <laughs> you never did no Mm-mm. never had to Mm-mm. never did no nope. man shut up see I thought you, you I never did. did have you done it unintentionally no like you was doing it thinking that you know you and the person was into each other but then you find out they was just using you for your body or they they was using you because they wanted something from you no and then when they realized you couldn't give it to them anymore they stopped no but somebody um, recently tried to do it And I'm not going to put that person's name on blast But I do want to put it out there You know I've been trying to get into politics a little bit With Hollywood Unlocked To find out what's going on Use my platform responsibly mm-hmm. Tell the culture what's happening yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met somebody from the DNC Trying to find out how to get to the marketing money Because they spent like 60 million dollars With media over the last election I We didn't get none And the person kept talking to me Like I had to drop some penis off in order or you know, do something more than just politic to get the money get to that conversation Ooh. and i was like yo the dnc y'all playing with the y'all playing with me because <laughs> you know i haven't put the person's name out because now i'm talking to somebody else but you right. could easily i mean the story's still uh, active it's still open yeah i couldn't believe in politics the dc they was trying to play me d oh it was DC. trying to play me in the d <laughs> you know what dc stands for don't you what no i'm not saying it <laughs> <laughs> Control? Yeah, that's me up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, what's going on, Doctor? Big Al. I wear Houston. What's up, Big Al? Big Al from H Town. What's up, brother? How y'all doing? How y'all doing, Charlemagne? Oh. DJ Envy. We Jason, bless black and holly favorite. We what here. What's happening? Hey, I wanna I wanna come in on the topic, Doc. You're <gasps> talking about have I ever traded sex for anything? Yes. Well, hell yeah. Yo, check this out. I was about, I don't know, bro. I was about in my 20s, right? So I'm old, mo. So I was in my 20s, right? And this chick, she used to work on the aisle right next to me on the machine. I working there through the loom. And so my car ended up getting taken from me because I was dating this girl that was in the military that was in Korea. She came back. She found condoms in the damn car. So she took the damn car from me. So I had to pay for sex. Yo. I ain't have to pay for sex. I traded sex for a ride to work. You hear me? My rent got paid that month. I'm not mad they at that. You know what they they're going to learn today. You, 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 you used what you got to get what you want. He could have took the bus. Might have been made, made his commute longer. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Ken. Ken, good morning, man. Talk to us. Good morning, good morning, DJ Envy. Tell the main and Angela. How y'all doing this morning? That's not Angela. That's, That's Jason Lee. Jason right. Lee. <laughs> Yeah, I um, <laughs> I had a I had an experience. So I had came home from the penitentiary after doing like ten years. It seemed like everywhere I went, the management was you know LGBT too. So you know I had to play the role and, and you know <laughs> and, and sweeten it up a little bit to get on. 
Hold on, I have a question. This is this oh, is boy. this is Angela Yee. So when you were in the prison, did you ever trade any sex for snacks? Because I know <laughs> I know commissary be real no. serious. No. Nah, hey, listen. I got. Hey, listen. The whole ten years, I never. I was solid through my whole bit. Never messed around. Never got down like that. And that's a that's a falsehood, bro. People, that, the guys that get in there and do that, they already was on that before they came to the penitentiary. I want to know why the people, had that why did the managers and stuff think that you was on that though? Like, what kind of energy you was giving off that they think they could try you like that? Well, well, what I'm saying is, is that I actually play, I actually sweeten up a little. Bit. <laughs> I, you know, I got the lift. I, I actually played the role, get the job. Oh, then, you want us to believe so you didn't play the role? Oh, you, didn't play the role oh, in jail, you really want us to believe you didn't play the role? In prison? No, no, no. He got out of prison and was a homeless sexual. I'm telling you, when you get out of prison, you don't have nowhere to live, so you drop the D off so you that can get some sleep. Is that what happened, sir? No, nah, that's called a hobo sexual. That's a person that don't have a place to live, and he trades sex to live with somebody. Well, exactly what you just said. At least you knew your title. Exactly. I ain't mad at Goodness it. So, talking about, did you do it? Yeah. No, nah, not with no. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't get out because I don't. I don't go that way. I probably wouldn't. I can't even. Ken, yeah, that don't even strike me. So. Ken, you, you told stutter. the person answering the phone you had sex with another man for a job. How deep did you go into the role, sir? You said you was acting. How nah, deep did, did you go into the role? I tell the person I had sex with another man for the job. I told him that I played the role of being gay for the job. That's but what I, I want to know. How out. deep did the role go? go? Like got to that point. Being gay for pay is okay, Ken. Just accept it and move on. Did you kiss the brother, Ken? I would. I didn't kiss nobody, bro. I I I, I didn't. You started. How do you play I, I gay? Actor, so I was able to. How do you play gay yeah, in real I, life? Hello. How do you play gay? Yeah. You you sweeten up your your talk. You 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 lift your wrist a little bit, and you you know I mean you 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 just you you soften it up a little bit when you you know when you're around you know. When Jason, you're, again, 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 I always say in these situations, okay. what will my brothers do? And they wouldn't be doing that. Ken Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie knows too. Man. Barbie knows. Barbie knows. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. It's freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. We're asking, have you ever traded fe- uh, sex for something? Call us now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Big old freak. Love to talk my shit. Made it. It's Freaky Friday. Goddamn. Hey, look, where are my freaks at? Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, 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 Freaky Friday. Friday. Now, the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question is, have you ever traded sex for something? To get a job, to get something you needed, to whatever it may be. And uh, we got a lot of people on the line. Jesus Christ. What? It's, it's, it's just sad there's so many people on the line. Cammy, good morning. Morning. Now we're asking, uh, have you ever had uh, traded sex for something? Yes, I sure have. Um, I'm married, and I will have sex with my husband for things I want. Goodness gracious. But you're not having sex with him. (laughs) First of all, you're having sex with him because that's your husband. You're his wife. He's providing you with things because you're his wife, not because you're giving him sex. Yes, but... Sex is further persuasion. I mean, sex. I mean, it's hard. You don't say. It's hard to say no after you know you don't got emptied out. That's when you're at your most vulnerable a lot of times when you're a man. But I don't think he's oh. doing that for you because for sex. Oh, there's a woman I know. The vagi- I think it's no. the, the vagina slayer who has a, a, a company called Femi Secrets, and she teaches women how to use that to get really? to control their husbands. Yes. Does that make it? Does that make the sex spicier? Ah, uh, she left. Oh, she hung up. Damn. Hung up. Hey, her husband caught her. Damn. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. This is This is Eva Khadidi calling from New Jersey. Good morning. So good morning. We're asking, um, have you ever traded sex for something is the question this morning. Okay, so first, first, first before we get into that, I do want to correct the gentleman who mentioned earlier that the B2 movement is about ma- having sex to make moves. Oh, that was Jason Lee. Jason um, Lee's here. He's here right now. Well, what, okay. I said, what, so, I said, well, what I meant was Lee, yeah go ahead. go ahead go ahead well the Me Too movement well, no, I, the Me Too movement was about women who were being forced into submission by powerful men in order to get opportunities that they would have to have sex correct oh oh yes yes and in many cases those women were actually raped so when you said that it was it was when the top when you brought up the topic um and you said that that's what the Me Too movement was about, having sex to make moves. 
you know, it gives this perception that the women had choice. So well, well, we know we know many. That, but we, thank you for defining that now. Yeah, we know in many of those situations that they that they didn't uh, have a choice. But we also oh, know they that, didn't think they had a choice. Uh, the power think, dynamic was so yeah, old. yeah. They didn't think they have a choice. We also know there should be a Men Too movement. We also know that the Me Too movement isn't a hundred percent foolproof either. So you know, but that's a whole debatable conversation for another day. Right, right. It is. Um, so to and I wanted to say something because I am a women's and children's rights activist, specifically pertaining to the exploit, sexual exploitation of women and children. So, um, and then in reference to today's question, I personally have never exchanged, you know, a sexual favor for some form of benefit. But I do think that anybody has their number. You know, right now the Mega Millions is one point. <laughs> 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 you know, and I can't necessarily say that if someone offered me a willing ticket in exchange for some sort of sexual favor, I wouldn't take the opportunity. Yeah, but how would you know the but ticket was a winning I ticket, though? How would you know the winning ticket? The, well, number, it would the numbers would have to be called already. Right, the numbers would have to be called already, but it's a, it's, we know that it's a winning ticket. That definitely has been established well, in the fight. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, if somebody <laughs> has the winning ticket, that price is definitely going to be a lot less than that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bob. Well, and thank you. <laughs> Even for $1.6 billion. At least you know, you're being honest. You're being honest, honest, Queen. I respect <laughs> it. Goodness gracious. Absolutely. I, now, what's the moral of the story, guys? I wonder if everybody really does have a price, though. I do. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> and everybody are you talk, dumb? Hey, are you dumb? Are you dumb? <laughs> what people be talking about? I ain't got no price. Are you Jason crazy? said that so what? quick. You were talking about, would you let somebody crap on you? You could pay me like Picasso for $1.5 billion <laughs> at the Breakfast Club. You know what right you, <laughs> Does that, oh, That's interesting. What? I think everybody has a price, but I think everybody has a limit on what they would do for said price. Nope. I would think. I don't think that. I don't think you would do anything. Charlemagne, the winning ticket for to, for the Mega Million. I'm sorry, there is no, there's no comment. You ain't even got to ask me. Just put the ticket on the table and just write. There's it, write nothing it. you would. There's nothing you wouldn't do. Do you know the things that I've done for free? <laughs> Jesus I'm not gonna Christ. tell you, but 1.5 billion. Somebody comes to you with hard boiled babies. And they're like, you got to eat two of these hard-boiled babies. Uh huh. Do you? Know, I've swallowed babies before. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> I meant the these babies. Well, you said them up for that one. You said them up for that one. Cooked and cooked. Goodness gracious, <laughs> well, Charlamagne! I'm telling you, know your audience. All right. Well, the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Y'all, it's DJ NV. We are on vacation, but I want to remind you that my car show is going down May 28th in Memphis. You don't want to miss it. It's family fun, celebrity cars, exotic cars, old school cars, rides, and all those things. So get your tickets. Uh, you can click the link in my bio for more information. The kids five and under are free. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV. Tell me the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, you got a positive note? My positive note is simply this, man. Instead of ignoring loss and trauma or moving quickly past them, we can choose to slow down, sit with each loss, examine it, grieve it, because it's better to sink in and experience it now than to find yourself drowning years later in losses that had no voice. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? 